And then when they get into the early Cretaceous, they start getting quite a bit bigger. Uh, so something like Eutyrannus, if you want to. There you go. So Eutyrannus is fuzzy. Um, we have three specimens definitively feathered. Um, it gets to <laughs> six, seven meters long. There's something funny looking about the sexy, smaller, earlier version of the T-Rex. But, but again, this is seven, eight meters, maybe weighs half a ton or a ton. Like we we are very much on the menu for an animal that size and it's yeah. massive and dangerous. Quite what triggered them, there's general patterns in evolution of size change. And one famous one called Cope's Rule I've worked on a fair bit, which is the idea that over time things tend to get bigger. And they do for various different reasons. One of which is just pure, almost like diffusion. If you start small and you evolve, well, you can't get much smaller, but you can always get bigger. So you, you naturally kind of diffuse away. Whereas if you're a blue whale, you probably can't get much bigger and its descendants will probably end up being smaller. But there are reasons that bigger things do better. You can hunt more stuff. You're more energy efficient. You can move more efficiently. Um, you're dominant in contests, particularly with conspecifics. If you're trying to win a territory or win mating rights, bigger things usually beat up smaller things. So there's going to be selection favoring them. Um, but then big things don't usually do well in extinction events. So that tends to reset the clock by killing off the big stuff and then smaller stuff does better again. So mostly there's evolutionary advantages. But but a fairly big one. So yeah, it's the it's the classic thing of there's a day-to-day -day advantage of being bigger, and that might last for a few million years, right up to the point that suddenly there's the biggest drought the earth has encountered in five million years, and then all the big stuff just gets nailed. Also, we should probably say, is this accurate to say that the bigger you get, the fewer of you there, there are, are yeah there's there's just less fundamental space you know there's more mice than there are elephants there are more elephants than there are whales like there's only so much biomass that an ecosystem can support and bigger things are just worse at repopulating in extinction yeah, events for example right so that, so, so they're less likely to survive because they need more fuel you know what would feed a mouse for a year won't feed an elephant for a week so if and and of course the mice are going to have an easier time finding a few little seeds than elephants going to find tons of food. And then they've got less genetic diversity. There might be 5,000 mice, there might be 200 elephants. So who's likely to have more genes or who's likely to have selection acting on those genes to produce a survivor? Well, the one with five or 10 or a thousand times the population. And then, yeah, on top of that, you've then got the very slow reproductive cycle, which then, again, gives evolution not a lot to work with if as an elephant you're breeding once every five years and as a mouse you're doing it once every eight weeks